as you know, and I mean a gazillion percent, it is time to cover your assets. And here at ITM Trading, we use the Wealth Shield. And the foundation of the Wealth Shield is physical gold and silver in your possession, runs no counterparty risk, fights inflation, protects your purchasing power. The Feds, but not just the Feds, but the Feds' big policy mistake. Do you hear that sucking sound? Because that's your wealth going down the drain. So, all right, bubble fears. Oh my God, these markets are so severely overvalued and yet they keep pumping money into it. Now I know, which we'll talk about in a second, that the Fed has just announced that they will begin to taper, but it is not clear to me why we need to continue to run monetary policy so hot. Uh, the economy is doing just fine, but the collateral damage it's creating, the unintended consequences that are resulting are spreading. This is a Fed that's going to wait and I fear is going to fall behind and we risk a pretty big policy mistake. And one of the things that I've noticed, and maybe you've noticed this as well, every time they say, well, there's a big problem here, they always think that it'll be, but the problem really hasn't created all of those dysfunctions yet. Give me a break, would you please? Because these easy money policies have unintended consequences that frankly, well, not the people at the top of the K, they're doing just great. But those at the bottom of the K are really feeling small businesses, individuals. So let's just take a look at this easy money policy because I also thought that it was really interesting. U.S. financial conditions are near the loosest in four decades. Okay. Well, uh, actually they are the loosest in history. Why don't we just say the truth? Now, you know that it's insanity and you know that the bubbles are rising when you have junk quality. So this is admitted that they are more likely to default that are outperforming, that's his black line here. That is triple C. That is definitely junk quality, like at the quality, at the lowest level, almost, except it's still got a rating on it. And it has outperformed any of the higher quality rating levels. Not that you can trust the grading services. They have admittedly loosened up. I mean, they haven't quite said it in that way. But after all, these companies that have taken on so much debt, well-known names like, you know, Kraft or something like that, you know, company like that, really well known. So they're left at a triple B level when they shouldn't be. And they have admitted this. The grading services have admitted this. So we've got a huge problem on our hands. And if you are in these fiat money markets, I mean, look, can I give you guarantees? Not really, other than I'll show up and do the work. But the reality is, is insanity does not last forever, even when you think that it could. Even emerging market debt is, is uh, not performed as well as the lowest quality junk grading bonds. Now, I, I, I do not want you to mistake my saying this for telling you to go and run into these fiat markets because I like you too much and because my obligation is to give you the truth as I see it with lots of proof underneath. You have a different opinion than me, rock and roll hoochie coo. I can't tell you that you shouldn't. I want you to have an opinion. I want it to be strong and I want it to be educated. But of course, that's up to you. However... The insanity continues. You've now got forward price earnings ratios at the highest level, over 30 times earnings, when in reality, the average is 15 times earnings. And I really even question this graph, but okay, this was from Bloomberg, okay. 
So that means that the market should fall just to be fairly valued 50%. The index has been propped up by record retail passive inflows this year and is not indicative of the increasing uncertainty many companies are now facing as we try to fully restart the economy. This is an accident that is waiting to happen. But what happens, history tells us, and, and I'm going to do a redo of just before the crash, probably three weeks. When you see the retail investors come into these markets, when it is time to prop them up, interestingly enough, history tells us that that's when the central banks will determine that it's just too expensive to do it. It happens every time, every single time. So actually, when you see retail rushing into the markets, that's the time to be more cautious, definitely not less. No FOMO, no FOMO. Okay, so let's see. This just happened on November 3rd. Fed sings the transitory inflation refrain as he unveils bond buying taper. So they're going to buy a little bit less. But... Pal says, I don't think that we're behind the curve. Well, as I told you, showed you on the first slide, a lot of experts, and I definitely agree, they are way behind the curve because they're between a rock and a hard place. So they're going to try and run off their balance sheet, but the reality is, can they raise interest rates? I'm not even sure that they can run off their balance, well, run off their balance sheet. That just means buying a, a few less bonds at a really slow pace so the market can digest it. But as far as raising rates, they're not raising any rates. They kept the rates steady, but they kept the rates steady because they cannot raise rates into this tsunami of debt that they have inspired and created and taken on themselves. So I strongly, strongly, strongly disagree. Pal, you are way behind the eight ball and you, here's my magic eight ball. Let's ask it. Okay. Let's see. Is, are the, is the federal reserve behind the eight ball? Oh, yes, it says the magic eight ball says, heck yes. I agree. Magic eight ball. I totally agree with you. So it's food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. These are all important things to have in place so that you can weather this reset and sustain your current standard of living. If you want to protect your purchasing power, this is what you need, period.